the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. This morning we just read a passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew, where the Lord heals two men possessed by demons. This story is also recorded in the Gospels of St. Luke and St. Mark, but the other evangelists speak of one man who is possessed by a demon. Whereas here St. Matthew speaks of two. Don't let this kind of difference trouble you, or don't let it cause you to doubt the truth of the scriptures. You know, we're not the first generation of Christians to read the Bible. The Holy Fathers were aware of these differences and were not troubled by that. The most likely explanation here, given by St. John Chrysostom, is that there were two men, but St. Luke and St. Mark focused on the one who was suffering more severely and was as a result known more to the people in that area. Now before we unpack this text and why it is important for those who are engaged in the struggle of the spiritual life, I want to stop for a moment and explore why this kind of passage is a little difficult for us sometimes. When the scriptures talk about demons, it can make us feel uncomfortable. Some might feel embarrassed about belief in angels and demons and will avoid talking about them. This kind of thing and cannot be subjected to the scrutiny of science. And it seems to be out of touch with reality. So some people avoid recognizing any belief in angels or demons. That's why you hear people trying to explain away passages like this in the scriptures that speak of demonic possession. They say there's no, no such thing. This man or these men in this case suffer from epilepsy, but the people at the time didn't have the medical knowledge to diagnose that. This is not what the church teaches. Let's be clear, this is not what the fathers have taught. If we want to do away with every passage in the scriptures that poses a challenge to our modern thought, we'd be left with very little of the Christian faith. As a matter of fact, that's quite the commentary on popular Christianity today, and that is why the world is rejecting it. Another reason why people shy away from passages like this is fear. And I understand why this can be a little scary, especially for parents who are raising little children in the fear of the Lord. Hollywood and, and Halloween costumes have done a good job at distorting the reality of the spiritual world and stoking fear in us. If you need reassurance about this, listen to St. Cyril of Alexandria instead. He says, It will never happen that those who love Christ will become subject to demons. It will never happen to us as long... Here's a trick. Here's a really kicker. It will never happen to us as long as we walk in His footsteps and avoid negligence and desire honorable things. The fathers did not set out to stoke fear in believers. They offer a healthy spiritual optimism with a reminder of our responsibility to keep the faith. <laughs> من هالأمور أمور منا كثير بيقولوا الواحد 
مانا امور علميه فينا نحكي بهالامور ابدا واللي بيخاف من من الشياطين اللي بده من الاسكندريه بيقول له المؤمن ما بيتعرض لسيطره الشياطين اذا كان بيواظب على المسيره مسيره المسيح من دون تواني من دون خوف وبيكون عم يطلب الصالحات Now there's yet another group and I hope I can keep your attention for this there are some in the church who observe the dynamic of fear and embarrassment and the different misconceptions about angels and demons and they feel that they need to respond they come at this with very good intentions but they end up overemphasizing the angelic and demonic world to the point that it becomes their primary key to interpret the Bible and every area of the faith. If angels and demons have become the primary way in which you read the scriptures, in which you understand the faith, then I encourage you to consider seriously whether this is reflecting the fullness of the experience of the church. It is not. So what is the experience of the church? The experience of the church is that there is a physical world that we can experience with our senses, العالم الحسي, and a spiritual world that includes bodiless creatures, angels and demons. For the fathers of the church, the primary key for reading the scripture is not to obsess over angels and demons. And it's not to obsess over the spiritual world and put down the physical world. The primary key is the incarnation of the Son of God. When God became man, joining himself to humanity so intimately that he became one with his creation, uniting himself to us in his humanity, that one day we might be united to him in his divinity. This is the primary key. And this is in fact the reason why we have passages in the scriptures, like the one we read today, that speak of the interaction between the demons and God. If the Son of God did not become incarnate, we would not know anything about that. Now I talked a lot around the reading for today. Let's say a few words about this gospel and why it is important for those who are struggling with the spiritual life. Between the three accounts of this gospel in Matthew, Luke and Mark, the demon-possessed men are described as naked, bound by chains, and living not in a house, but among the tombs. بين الثلاث أناجيل نقرأ أن هول هول الأشخاص كانوا عريانين مقيدين أو مكبلين وعايشين مش ببيوت عايشين بين القبور. As far as society is concerned, these were dead. The fathers of the church offer us a beautiful spiritual interpretation. For this, nakedness signifies the loss of the baptismal garment. Living without a home means that these men have no rest for their conscience. And living among the tombs means that they delighted in the works of sin and death. The Lord heals and restores them from all these things. Now when the demons are cast out, they beg the Lord not to send them to the abyss, but to send them into a herd of swine. The first thing we see here is that the demons are completely powerless in front of the Lord. But they will still put up a resistance 
to try to remain, even if it's for a little longer, to torment somebody else. The Lord allows them to enter into the herd and they immediately they perish. When the people from that city saw this, especially the shepherds of the herd, they were afraid and asked Jesus to leave. One of the fathers commenting on this says, they preferred the filth of the swine over the purity of the Word of God. The Lord respects their wishes and so He leaves. This is how gentle He is. This is how unimposing His love is. He does not impose His love on anyone. So the Lord leaves them, but He does not stop loving them. When St. Luke tells the story, he says, when the Lord was leaving the city, He tells the man who is now healed not to come and follow Him, but to go back to his home. He is sending him back transformed and purified and healed in order to be an apostle to the city. What about us? Like these men, we are also bound up by many demons. In the church, we call these passions. They are sins that we fall into repeatedly that they start to exercise a pull on us. And they pull us to death. They pull us to death, that is, the loss of our union with Christ. Our healing begins to take place when this communion starts to be restored. This may happen quickly, or it may happen gradually over a period of time. But the Lord is always ready to offer this healing. Sometimes, because He is so unimposing, sometimes we feel that He doesn't want to give us this healing. But that's not the case. He doesn't withhold healing from us, but we need to participate in our own purification. Otherwise, we'd be no different from the people in the city who ask them to leave. But those who allow themselves to be healed, to be purified, to be transformed, the Lord sends them into the world to continue His healing ministry. This is what purified and transformed holy men and women, the glorified saints, this is what they are to us. And this is what you and I are called to be. Brothers and sisters, we do not need to be afraid of demons or to feel embarrassed nor to obsess over them because the Lord is continuing His ministry of healing in the church. You can unpack that at length, by the way. Above all else, let us seek this healing. Let us seek to be purified and to be transformed by the love of God through prayer through the reading of the scriptures, through the sacraments of the church, through a serious life of asceticism. The fear of demons made the whole city beg the Lord to depart. Instead, let us abide in the fear of God. So you may always hear the words that you will hear spoken by the deacon a little later in the liturgy. With the fear of God, with faith and love, draw near. Amen.